Hi, my name is Ted O'Connell, and I'm the author of USMLE Step 2 Secrets. This is part two of the acid base and electrolytes chapter. Let's get started. What are the signs and symptoms of hyperkalemia? Weakness and paralysis may occur, but the cardiac effects are the most tested. EKG changes in order of increasing potassium values include tall peaked P waves, widening of the QRS complex, prolongation of the PR interval, loss of P waves, and a sine wave pattern. Arrhythmias include asystole and ventricular fibrillation. What causes hyperkalemia? Renal failure, either acute or chronic, severe tissue destruction because potassium has a high intracellular concentration, hypoaldosteronism, Watch for hyporenemic hypoaldosteronism in diabetes. Medications, stop potassium sparing diuretics, beta blockers, NSAIDs, ACE inhibitors, and angiotensin receptor blockers. And finally, adrenal insufficiency, which is also associated with low sodium and low blood pressure. What should you suspect if an asymptomatic patient has hyperkalemia? With hyperkalemia, the first consideration, especially if the patient is asymptomatic and the EKG is normal, is whether the laboratory, test, the laboratory specimen is hemolyzed. Hemolysis causes a false hyperkalemia result because of high intracellular potassium concentrations. Repeat the test. The specimen was not hemolyzed. What is the first treatment? Obtain an EKG first to look for cardiotoxicity. In general, the best therapy for hyperkalemia is decreased potassium intake and administration of oral sodium polystyrene resin, which is also known as K-exalate. But if the potassium level is greater than 6.5 or cardiac toxicity is apparent, that is, more than peaked T waves, immediate intravenous therapy is needed. First, give calcium gluconate, which is cardioprotective, although it does not change potassium levels. Then give sodium bicarbonate because alkalosis causes potassium to shift inside cells. And then give glucose with insulin. Insulin also forces potassium inside cells and glucose prevents hypoglycemia. Beta-2 agonists also drive potassium into cells and can be given if the other choices are not listed on the test. If the patient has renal failure or initial treatment is ineffective, prepare to institute emergent dialysis. What are the signs and symptoms of hypocalcemia? Hypocalcemia produces neurologic findings, the most commonly tested of which is tetany. Tapping on the facial nerve at the angle of the jaw elicits contraction of the facial muscles and is called Schwastek sign. An inflation of a tourniquet or blood pressure cuff elicits hand muscle carpopedal spasms, which is called trousseau sign. Other signs and symptoms are depression, encephalopathy, dementia, laryngospasm, and convulsions or seizures. The classic EKG finding is QT interval prolongation. What should you do if the calcium level is low? First, remember that hypoproteinemia, that is low albumin, of any etiology can cause hypocalcemia because the protein bound fraction of calcium is decreased. In this instance, however, the patient is asymptomatic because the ionized, unbound, physiologically active fraction of calcium is unchanged. Thus, you should first check the albumin level and or the ionized or free calcium level to make sure true hypocalcemia is present. For every one gram per deciliter decrease in albumin below four, correct the calcium by adding 0.8 milligrams per deciliter to the given calcium value. What causes hypocalcemia? DeGeorge syndrome, which shows up as tetany 24 to 48 hours after birth, as well as an absent thymic shadow on x-ray. Renal failure, remember the kidney's role in vitamin D metabolism. Hypoparathyroidism, watch for a post-thyroidectomy patient. All four parathyroids may have been inadvertently removed. Vitamin D deficiency, pseudo-hypoparathyroidism, look for short fingers, short stature, mental retardation, and normal levels of parathyroid hormone with end organ unresponsiveness to parathyroid hormone, acute pancreatitis, and finally, renal tubular acidosis. Describe the relationship between low calcium and low magnesium. 
it's difficult to correct hypocalcemia unless until hypomagnesemia of any cause is also corrected. So make sure you take care of correcting that. How does pH level how does pH affect calcium levels? Alkalosis, alkalosis can cause symptoms similar to hypocalcemia through effects on the ionized fraction of calcium because alkalosis causes calcium to shift intracellularly. Clinically, this scenario is most common with hyperventilation and anxiety syndromes in which the patient eliminates too much carbon dioxide, becomes alkalotic, and develops perioral and extremity tingling. Treat by correcting the pH. Reduce anxiety if, hype, if hyperventilation is the cause. Describe the relationship between calcium and phosphorus. Phosphorus and calcium levels usually go in opposite directions. When one goes up, the other goes down, and derangements in one can cause problems with the other. This relationship becomes clinically important in patients with chronic renal failure in whom you must not only try to raise calcium levels with vitamin D and calcium supplements, but also restrict or reduce phosphorus intake. What are the signs and symptoms of hypercalcemia? Hypercalcemia is often asymptomatic and discovered by routine lab tests. When symptoms are present, recall the following rhyme, bones, stones, groans, and psychiatric overtones. For bones, look for bone changes such as osteopenia and pathologic fractures. Stones refer to kidney stones and polyuria. Groans refers to abdominal pain, anorexia, constipation, ileus, nausea, and vomiting. Psychiatric overtones refers to depression, psychosis, and delirium or confusion. Abdominal pain may also be caused by peptic ulcer disease and or pancreatitis, both of which have an increased incidence with hypercalcemia. The EKG classically shows QT interval shortening when hypercalcemia is present. What causes hypercalcemia? Hypercalcemia in outpatients is most commonly caused by hyperparathyroidism. In inpatients, the most common cause is malignancy. Check the parathyroid hormone level to differentiate hyperparathyroidism from other causes. Other causes include vitamin A or D intoxication, sarcoidosis, thiazide diuretics, familial hypocalciuric hypercalcemia, look for a low urinary calcium, which is rare with hypercalcemia, and finally, immobilization. Hyperproteinemia, that is high albumin, of any etiology can cause hypercalcemia because of an increase in the protein-bound fraction of calcium, but the patient is asymptomatic because the ionized, unbound fraction is unchanged. Why is asymptomatic hypercalcemia usually treated. Prolonged hypercalcemia can cause nephrocalcinosis, urolithiasis, and renal failure because of calcium salt deposits in the kidney and may result in bone diseases secondary to loss of calcium. How is hypercalcemia treated? First, give IV fluids. Once the patient is well hydrated, give furosemide to cause calcium diuresis. Thiazides are contraindicated because they increase serum, ser serum calcium levels. Other treatments include phosphorus administration, use oral phosphorus, IV administration can be dangerous, calcitonin, bisphosphonates, plecomycin, or prednisone, especially for malignancy-induced hypercalcemia. Correction of the underlying cause of hypercalcemia is the ultimate goal. The previous measures are all temporary until definitive treatment can be given. For hyperparathyroidism, surgery is the treatment of choice. In what scenario is hypomagnesemia usually seen? Alcoholism. Magnesium is wasted through the kidneys. What are the signs and symptoms of hypomagnesemia? Signs and symptoms are similar to those of hypocalcemia that is, prolonged QT interval on the EKG, and possibly tetany. In what clinical scenario is hypermagnesemia seen? Hypermagnesemia is classically iatrogenic in patients who are pregnant and are treated for preeclampsia with magnesium sulfate. It also commonly occurs in patients with renal failure. Patients who receive magnesium sulfate should be monitored carefully because the physiologic findings of hypermagnesemia are progressive. The initial sign is a decrease in deep tendon reflexes, then hypotension and respiratory failure occur 
sequentially. How is hypermagnesemia treated? First, stop any magnesium infusion. Remember the ABCs, airway, breathing, and circulation, and intubate the patient if necessary. If the patient is stable, start IV fluids. Furosemide can be given next, if needed, to cause a magnesium diuresis. The last resort is dialysis. In what clinical scenarios is, hyper, is hypophosphatemia seen? What are the signs and symptoms? Hypophosphatemia primarily is seen in patients with uncontrolled diabetes, especially diabetic ketoacidosis, and alcoholic patients. Signs and symptoms of hypophosphatemia include neuromuscular disturbances, such as encephalopathy or weakness, rhabdomyolysis, especially in alcoholic patients, anemia, and white blood cell and platelet dysfunction. What is the IV fluid of choice in hypovolemic patients? Normal saline or lactated ringer solution, regardless of the other electrolyte problems. First, fill the tank, then correct the imbalances that the kidney cannot sort out on its own. What is the maintenance fluid of choice for patients who are not eating? One half normal saline with 5% dextrose is usually given in adults. Typically, one fourth normal saline with 5% dextrose is given in children weighing less than 10 kilograms. One third or one half normal saline with 5% dextrose is given in children weighing more than 10 kilograms. Should anything be added to the IV fluid for patients who are not eating? Usually potassium chloride, 10 or 20 milli equivalents, is added to a liter of IV fluid to prevent hypokalemia, assuming that the baseline potassium level is normal. That's the end of the part two of the acid base and electrolytes chapter. We hope that you'll join us for uh, other chapters from USMLE Step 2 Secrets.